Hi and welcome to Clay Clay. My name is Emily and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a mug with a little twisted handle. So to start you don't actually need much, you obviously just need your clay and a little bit of water and your tool kit. I've got about 500 grams here um, but obviously just depending on the size of your mug if you wanted something a lot bigger then you might just go for about 600. I also have got here a little turntable and um, this just makes it a little bit easier when applying coils. So don't, not necessary but really handy tool to have. We're we'll using two of the hand building techniques. We're going to be using a pinch pot and coiling. So to start the cup, we're going to start by creating a pinch pot and then we're going to add coiling on top to get that height. So taking about a third of your clay and then rolling it into a nice ball. It should sit in your palm of your hand quite nicely. Then from here, if you're right-handed, you will take your right thumb and just press right down into the center of that ball of clay. Make sure that you're leaving about a centimeter between your thumb and your forefingers. And then from here, you're going to rotate the ball in your hand, constantly squeezing here we're looking to create a centimetre wall all around the outsides and then also on the bottoms as well. So as we are pushing down, we are widening the walls as well. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we're working towards all of the walls being of even thickness. A few taps to create a flat surface for your cup to sit on. This is the starting point for our mug, but if you are wanting a really wide mug, from here you would just pull those edges out. Remembering that clay does shrink once it does fire. On average, depending on the clay, shrinks between about 10 and 12%. So you want to make, whatever you're making, you want to make it bigger than its purpose. Okay, so I'm happy about that. I'm looking to make a mug about this size. So I'm pretty happy with that width at this stage. It's a bit wider than my current mug I have here. So now we're going to make some coils that we're going to coil around the top of our mug. It's just moving that to one side. I'm going to roll out our piece of clay rolling away from you spreading out your fingers and applying even pressure as you do so and these coils were aiming for one centimetre again so we're working to the same thickness as the base now taking our needle tool we are going to score and then slip our um, base of our cup and then the top of the coil so I'm just going through and scratching up that surface. This clay I'm using is a hand building clay, so I don't need a slip as such. A slip being the clay that you're using with water and like a toothpaste consistency. Here, um, just plain water um, is suffice, but um, by all means, if you're not too sure, just go ahead and make a slip up, just using your clay and a little bit of water. Okay, so just applying a bit of water to both edges, then that's just going to go on top. Here you can see I've placed a piece of paper on top of my turn table. This just stops the clay sticking to the surface. Um, cardboard's great as well because obviously you've got that firmness to place it on and then you can move it around. So here you can see I've just added my first coil and it's just kind of sitting on the outer edge. Then taking your wooden tool we're going to blend that coil into the base. And while we're doing this we need to make sure that we support that outside edge with our other hand. And vice versa with the outside seam. 
So now that's all blended in, we just need to smooth it out. So using your finger is always best. Just go through smooth where you can, outside and inside. See, I'm kind of pressing down, supporting um, the outside when I'm pressing on the inside and vice versa. Now we can just rinse and repeat. So coiling, scoring and slipping and blending. So now that I've mostly blended this, I'm going to go through and just squeeze the walls of my cup just to get that even wall thickness all the way through. Also lift, lifting up as well just to get a bit more height in your cup. Okay. So it's really starting to come along now. As you can see, I've got a really good width there. You think of my hand holding it and remembering this is going to shrink. The width is really great. I could be it will shrink obviously that 10%, so that I'm happy with that, but I do need a little bit more height. So I'm gonna go through and put another coil on. So I am happy with the size of my mug now. And as you can see when you move it around, it is still fragile. So we're just gonna leave that to dry for a little bit. And next we're going just to make the handles. We're gonna be making a wee twist handle like on this mug here um, super simple all we need is three coiled pieces um, and quite thin um, so a lot thinner about half the thickness that we were working with before maybe a little bit more now these ones we do need to look as tidy as possible so really take your time with them to get them even and without any nail marks if possible. Then taking a little thumb, just chop that. So we're probably looking at about three inches. So we have two. Then I like to just kind of stack them together like in a triangle. And then just slowly start to twist. You just want to do this quite lightly and gently. The clay has been sitting out for a while now, so it is starting to get a little bit firmer. Tap and turn. So we've got two options. We can kind of leave that to dry for a little bit and firm up there, or we can actually get a bit of um, curvature into it while it dries. Um, you can use anything really like a pot rolling pin or a, um, a toilet roll, anything really that's got a little bit of curve. I'm just going to pop my cup down here and that's on top just so it dries, starts to dry with a bit of that curve in it. And I'm just going to leave that um, probably for about half an hour. Again, um, it's the summer here at the moment, so it is quite warm. Um, in winter, it would take a lot longer. You just want to keep checking on it. Basically, you want it to be at a point where the shape starts to hold a little bit, um, and it's still malleable in the sense that you can score and slip the bottoms here. Okay, and now we're ready to attach our handle. The cup's been sitting for probably a couple hours now and it's really hardened up. See, I can move it around. It's really quite firm. Still go through and smooth out any of those imperfections, um, but the general shape is there. So I just go through with a wet sponge, just make sure any of those areas that I might have missed, you can kind of blend together with your sponge and also get rid of 
nail marks or little dents. And same with the top as well. You just really want to go through there and really sharpen that off. So my um, handle's actually getting quite dry now, so it's ready to attach. Going to find a place that's going to kind of sit. It's going to sit nicely. Okay. And then I'm going to just clean up the ends. If you have a knife, um, that's the best option. But if you do have your needle tool, you can still cut with your needle tool. So I just have those um, ends just flush. Um, and then in here I have made a slip this time round um, even with the clay that I'm using with even though it's great um, when I am attaching handles or anything I do like to make up a slip you can see there is kind of like a glue like consistency um, so we'll be using that to attach the handle so basically go in and find your, where you would like to place your handle and mark it and then just start to scribe it up and then the same with your handle I have found um, attaching handles is one of the trickiest things to do in pottery. Um, two reasons really, you've got this big body of clay here that dries at a slower rate than your handle, so your handle is going to dry a lot faster, meaning it's going to shrink faster than your cup. Um, so by making your handle at the very end, at least it's giving your cup a little bit more time to dry. You can also wrap this in plastic. Um, so it dries at a slower rate as well. And then even once you've attached your handle, you can wrap um, your handle in plastic again so it slows down your handle's drying time in comparison to your cup. So now that we have scribed and slipped, I'm going to go ahead and attach that handle. So from here I like to go in with a paintbrush just so I can pick up more of that slip and then just kind of get it around every single surface point that meets and fill in any potential cracks. putting just a, um, a standard piece of clay in for your handle you can actually really smudge um, the handle in and actually blend it out just with these twisted handles um, they just get distorted if you go and do that so that's why I'm applying just lots of slip and then if you find that your handle is a little bit slagging sponge or something else just to prop it up. But from here you can wrap this up in plastic and that will just allow it to low, dry a little bit slower than the rest of your cup. Okay, so our cup's been drying for about two days now and so it's really firmed up. Um, I've had the plastic around the uh, handle and so now I'm ready just to do my finishing touches. So all I've got here is a wet sponge and a grater. Taking the grater, I'm just going to grate away any of the high points just to even out the top of my mug. Then taking the wet sponge, I'm just going to smooth it all out again and clean up the rest of my mug.
Okay, so we're all finished to dry in a controlled environment. So somewhere where the airflow is even, there's no direct sun on one side, things like that. So in a cupboard's great, or um, in a box, something like that, where that environment's pretty controlled and it's gonna dry even. Once that's dried in about two weeks, then it is ready for your bisque fire. To check that it is ready, you can just test it. Um, I've just got a piece that's been sitting here for a couple months um, that is ready to be bisked. Um, so a few things you can do is just the sound of it. Give it a tap, hear that hollow sound um, in comparison to that dull, non-existent sound of our wet piece. Um, the other thing is just to take a drop of water and place it onto your pottery and if it starts to disappear pretty quickly then you're ready to fire it. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. If you have any questions please pop them in the comments below or come and visit us at clayplay.co.nz.